West Virginia weed for the win. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com with another look at some of the ways that we are winning. And one of the great ways I'm winning is with my brand new awesome Freedom t-shirt from our good friends at TragedyAndHope.com. And we're coming to you for the week of April 10th with some solutions-oriented stories from the growing apartment balcony that we try and turn into a little garden each and every year. You gotta take and try and make the most of what space that you have and we spent this last weekend with our fingers in the dirt replanting a lot of our plants and getting some starts going. So Frankie and I are out here running around on the porch with another look at some of the ways that we are winning and yes the good news out of West Virginia I'll have a brief bit about at the end of this good news next week episode where we first will head to California where a company called Leaf and Love are the first Certified glyphosate free lemonade. So it's a drink company out of California, and they've hooked up with the Detox Project, who's actually one of the first places to certify products to have glyphosate free, no glyphosate residue. And so, huge thanks and much love to Leaf and Love for making that happen. They're only in California right now, and that's pretty much where most of the grocery stores that they are as well. But you can, of course, get them on Amazon. And, of course, everything that we say and play will always be included in the show notes of these Good News Next Week episodes. So you can find more information and continue the research for yourself. We put all these stories together using hashtag Good News Next Week, and we love to get the stories submitted from you. We are not only crowdfunded, but we are crowdsourced, open source news and information. Three stories with really pretty much heartwarming videos, all from Al Jazeera English. The first one is Luna, the mobile library, and it's basically a guy and his horse rolling around Indonesia with a free lending library to help generate literacy in Indonesia. The second video, the guy in Kenya who drives 70 plus kilometers several times a week to deliver water to the animals of Kenya. Basically noted as a little kid, he wanted to always do something to help help his animals there. So we can see animals in one way being a lending library in Indonesia and giving back to them in another way as the guy drives around in Kenya to give them water. The triple, the hat trick from Al Jazeera with a little bit of good news and these are coming from our friends Ray Vahi and Sean Cathcart and all our other friends who submit these good news stories using hashtag good news next week that women in Nepal are all getting together to do things about water shortages there. So it's only a hop, skip, and a jump from Nepal to go to Ghana to talk about two things that strike fear into the hearts of Ugandan elites. That's crowdfunding and menstruation. That's right. When girls have their period in Uganda, they don't have good stuff to take care of it. They're often away from school, they're often away from work, and they don't have the stuff. So you have basically one people teaching girls how to sew their own sanitary pads. And this is where we would just put in the put in the plug for the for the diva cup and some of the you know renewable ways that you can deal with menstruation. Again, we'll include that in the show notes. But it basically turned into a story that it showed not only what's going on in Uganda related to health, but also what goes on when you start to talk about these things and crowdfunding starts to happen and attention starts to come to it and there's all kinds of crackdowns on free speech and you can't say these sorts of crazy things on Facebook and all these other kind of fake bastions of free speech. So a really interesting story and that's from our buddy Eric Moshe, that story out of Uganda. So we hop to the Silk Road and that's the new Silk Road and just like it showed a decline in drug overdoses as of course you let the market do it there's now new research that shows that uber is leading to massive drops in drunk driving incidents and accidents so another fantastic way that the free market wins and again it ain't about uber it's about the decentralized idea that you can be a taxi too you can be a anything you want to some other good news, and we file some of these under not unmitigated good news because it's maybe a little bit of silver lining around some, some dark clouds, but we'll take the good news any way that we can get it. Texas Senate votes to ban red light cameras. Now, we may have mentioned that on a recent episode of New World Next Week, my long-running series with James Corbett of CorbettReport.com, where we've been trying to renew our highlight of some of the ways that we are winning and have good news stories on those weekly New World Next Week episodes. As long as we're in Texas, other bits of good news about Robert Groden. He basically settled massive lawsuits 
over his faulty or unlawful arrest in Dallas. He's been a long time JFK truther and without even getting into the who did what and the ballistics and I believe this guy or I don't believe this guy, he's basically just been trying to drop JFK truth bombs in Dallas and he's pretty much har harassed and hounded out of existence. Robert Groden, you might recall, we featured very recently on your Morning Monarchy. He was the one along with Dick Gregory to show the Zapruder film to America for the very first time back in 1975 on Good Night America from good old Geraldo. There's also some good news and pushback of dozens of states against civil asset forfeiture. And again, I think a lot of what we talk about, the sort of these are war of ideals and, and meme wars and mind viruses, when people learn about civil asset forfeiture and they realize, oh, this has been going on. Oh, this goes on in maybe your podunk kind of boss hog kind of town. And once people learn about it going on in their areas, dozens of states have now been putting caps on civil asset forfeiture. And there might even be the possibility that the Supreme Court might weigh in on what is basically legalized theft. It's where the cops steal your shit from you and you're not even charged from a crime, let alone even being convicted. And a lot of the best things, again, don't take any groups, don't take any isms, don't take any meetings, you don't have to take any oaths. You're just like two brothers in Philly who make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and give them away to homeless people. That kind of stuff. You can just do it. And again, you don't have to take orders, you don't have to take, it's just, you do it. And if people find out about it, that's great. If people can herald your praises on good news episodes, all the better. But it's all the unspoken things that sort of make the world a, a better place, to as hokey as it can be. Now, at the end of this episode, I've just got some breaking fantastic news, but I don't have tons of details. However, I'll get those details, and we'll go into it further on the upcoming episode of Your Mary Jane Report. I've been doing monthly episodes with our buddy Mr. Chris, who runs the Mary Jane Report over in New Jersey, and we're going to do a little bit of a longer episode this week, and hopefully we can get that and spread that out and hopefully give a little bit of enticement to some of our fine supporters and subscribers. But the two bits of good news coming out of West Virginia, the House unanimously approved commercial hemp farming. So that is the industrial hemp. That's the, you can't get high off it stuff. That's the stuff you make paper and textiles and rope and process and that. That's the good, that's the, the physical stuff. The other part that is much more recent is that West Virginia has also approved now medical marijuana. And among the smallest of things it's going to do, which is going to be fantastic for the state, it's not the least of which. It's going to help hopefully tackle the massive opioid crisis, the big pharma-induced drug epidemic of people overdosing all around the country as they went from heroin to synthetic opioids. If they can just grow more pot, a lot of these problems, again, are just going to disappear overnight because it won't take orders from headquarters and it won't take big group meetings. It'll just take people kind of like it's been done for millennia of just growing the answers to a lot of their problems that have been caused, again, by the state, by the massive overarching systems of tyranny that will pretty much be overthrown by doing things ourselves. I want to hear about some of the ways that you're waiting in your community, some of the things you're building. I love seeing more and more little free libraries go up in my neighborhood. I love seeing the ideas spread around more and more and people being excited about the idea of being more positive and living in hopefully a more fruitful looking forward way. Like our buddy Richard Grove at Tragedy and Hope says, you know, we, we've figured out how deep the rabbit hole goes. Maybe we don't have to continue going further and further and further down. We want to, as he also says, learn our way forward. So this is Good News Next Week, episode 47, I believe, for the week of April 10th, 2017. Another fine look at some of the ways that we are winning, my friends. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com, thanking you for watching and listening and reminding you, as always, like Jello Biafra said, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Pilato. Since 2005, Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology and the occult, all remixed with music and media that matters. Go to MediaMonarchy.com slash support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent, non-commercial, alternative media going and growing. Thanks.